Well, big data or general data is of course a very, very important topic for us. You have to see that the business model of L'Oreal actually comes from an idea that for the past years we have done, of course, kind of B2B and we sold to businesses that finally sold to the consumers. Now we're at a stake where we need to know more about our consumers because consumers want they're more demanding. They want individualized products, they want products which fit more to their needs. The whole market is changing, everything is about customization. So it becomes very important for us to actually know better about our consumers that actually use the products in the end. So the way to this leads, of course, through data, through interactions with consumers, making sure we know them, we understand their needs, we get a feeling how they interact with our brands. So actually big data, especially data in itself, not necessarily big data, is a very, very important way for us to get more consumer-centric at the end of the day, which is the overall goal of L'Oreal, because beauty is something which is for each and every person something very else. For you, beauty is something else than for me. Do I have a bird, not a bird? I don't know. At the end of the day, it's really to understand the specific consumer needs of each and every single one and make actually sure we can somehow reflect. And data absolutely is helping us a lot there. Mm. Some of my colleagues would smile now because I repeat this like a broken record. Um, but if I'd, if I'd have to sum it up in one sentence, it'd truly be customer service is not a department, it's an attitude. And I let that sink in for a while, full stop, because that's truly what it, what it means for me. Um, you cannot deliver a great customer experience, not just the customer service aspect, if not the whole company is truly aligned and dedicated to that, to that aim. It's not just going to happen. We're actually moving to a mobile first organization. Mm -hmm. um, we have a mobile website, which is a responsive website, and we do have a hy hybrid app. Um, which also I think is one of the takeaways I'm taking from this conference that for e-commerce players responsive website and hybrid apps are the way to go. Um, there's not either or um, because f or at least for us there's no either or because we are also using the app to offer some functionality that we don't have on the website. All right, so one of the key challenges that, of course, we are facing is um, the speed of market. It's always to be actually on top of the market. We have very innovative products and we really need to make sure that the way we communicate with our consumers and the way we market them, that we reach the full potential. There are very many young generations coming. There are generations coming that don't watch linear TV, but only Netflix. How can you reach them? How can you actually make sure they're aware of the new fragrance coming, of the new makeup coming? And how can you get somebody satisfied who's watching the new makeup trends actually on Instagram, on Snapchat, whatsoever? So things are happening, happening outside the fashion shows where they used to happen 20 years ago. There was a New York fashion show, now red is the color of the year. It happens because Selena Gomez posts something on Snapchat. Mm. So this is, this is really one of the key challenges for us to transform onto a very consumer-centric marketing, meaning understanding where the consumers are and making sure that we have a relevant concept for the relevant consumer at the relevant time, customized. You need to have the relationships. It's all about the inner, inner company networking, truly. Because there's a lot of functions that traditionally do not have end consumer contact at all. Um, thus, obviously, their targets and their motivation is actually not aligned towards the end customer's demand. Um, you need to explain to these inner functions why all of a sudden they need to change the process, need to change behavior and actually take on additional tasks that they're not used to doing. And you also obviously need to incentivize them. Maybe by setting, setting targets or some, some financial targets or just showing them the, the advantage that actually comes from these as well. It was two very exciting days, I have to say. It's interesting to see that so many people, especially here in Berlin, gather from a European background and can talk so much about consumer centricity, making sure that within all the business models, we saw many retailers today, we saw solution providers, we saw actually very practical examples, all of them can somehow relate back to the same topic. So we're having the same currency, we're talking about the same values. It's uh, one of the key takeaways to see, number one, the topic is evolving, 
Uh, a few years ago, I think it would have been way more difficult to actually nail it down. And number two, um, we're facing kind of the same challenges everywhere. It comes a lot back to, in the personal talks, a lot back to advertising, how to make sure you can actually grow your market, how to make sure you can engage with the right target groups, because more data and more possibilities to engage with the consumers also means more complexity. And this is one of the major challenges which is currently out there. Mm -hmm. It was a really good um, conference. I really enjoyed being here the two days. Uh, and, um, you know, I took bit, bits and pieces out of uh, different um, presentations. The one was the mobile panel. I think uh, I was, you know, you always think mobile, you know, where are we in the state of the art of the business? So um, I got a pretty good understanding that responsive and the hybrid app are a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Um, cross device tracking is also something we really, really, really looking into it and mm -hmm. uh, I found out everyone is looking into it and mm -hmm. the solution is not on the table yet. Uh, so there, you know, I think we are also on a pretty good path here. Um, I also like to get to know the fact that, you know, we are, how did uh, Martin said that we are moving away from pinching and pitching or so, mm -hmm. so voice is going to change the way we search, you know, and it's not the first time I'm hearing that, mm -hmm. you know, Google is uh, talking about it quite a bit too, but I'm got me thinking, you know, in my head, like, what does that mean for our marketing mix, for the marketing strategy, and how fast is it going to be coming? I cannot sum it up quite so easily. Um, I, I always love to, to have some cross-functional exchange, and uh, that certainly uh, happened here today. We talked about um, all kinds of aspects of the e-commerce realm. We talked about fraud, payments, languages, social media, the end consumer and, and, and B2B business. Um, pl plenty of those aspects. It's, it's just fantastic to talk to, to um, not competitors, but um, just common common people in the e-commerce in the realm. It's still a small family and I enjoy being part of it very much.